Hello all, let's talk about autoencoders. With this video I will try to demonstrate the simplest explanation ever. So let's start. Firstly, take relax and look at these numbers. The first sequence of numbers. And the second sequence of the numbers. At first glance it will seem that the first sequence should be easier. However, if you look carefully at the second sequence, you will notice that it is just a list of even numbers from 50 to 14. Once you notice this pattern, the second sequence becomes much easier to memorize than the first because you only need to remember the pattern. It is hard to memorize the long sequences is what makes useful to recognize patterns. And hopefully this clarifies why we constraining and autoencoders. Autoencoders help to model to find and explain patterns. To transform this information to more realistic words, let's talk about chess game example. The relationship between memory, perception and pattern matching was studied by William Chase and Herbert Simon in 1970. It's uh, 50 years ago at the moment I recording this video. This was only the case when the pieces were placed in realistic positions, not when the pieces were placed randomly. Patterns help store information efficiently. That means that the autoencoders help to remove non-meaningful information from data. Let's call this as noise and transform the meaningful information. Let's call this a signal as output. As in your brains, you always try to remember everything in details, but your brains deliver only the most meaningful details about a specific event or situation. That's all so far you should know. Now it's the time to highlight the main idea about autoencoders. Let's have a simple example. This is a plane, as I guess Boeing 737. And this plane is our input. Easy so far, yes? So the model is looking to this input. What's next? We need to convert this noisy image of Boeing to something readable for model. A model understands numbers, so we need somehow transform the input to efficient latent representation. In this example, it is a matrix of some numbers. Next step in here is provide an output. If you look at the input image, you should see that the image is noisy and what autoencoder can do with this image is to deliver the same image but improved without noise. So our output is something that is looks very close to the input. Hopefully, of course. If the model is set up correctly, the model is doing all the best to deliver output as like this. Let's look again into schema. From logical point of view we have two parts. Encoder, which takes an input and converts it to a something readable to a model. This is the encoder or recognition network. And the second part which read the magic combination of numbers and transform into something similar to an input but better. This is the decoder or generative network. Keep in mind mentioned keywords. Input, latent representation, encoder, decoder and network. As we having an intuition what the autoencoders do, let's dive into autoencoders with more technical approach. Come back a little bit to a chess game example. We have a chess board in reality. Then we have something alien brain which converts the chess position into something readable for the model. And finally we have an output that is very similar to an input. Let's say that the output is our attempt to reproduce the chess position in our or mind brains. So again, firstly we have inputs, then latent representation and outputs which are similar to inputs. Ok, now we know something how autoencoders works. Now let's try to build our first neural network which perform these actions we have discussed just before. Let's make it simple. For example, we have 3 inputs, 3 chess, 3 pixels, 3 actual wallets, anything that we want to reproduce or improve. So at the very beginning we have x1, x2 and x3. As we have discussed, input wallets must be transformed into something readable for the model. These two green circles are neural network hidden layer. The hidden layers in neural networks perform non-linear transformation of the inputs entered into the network. Basically, hidden layers are located between the input and output of the algorithm. So let's do these transformations. 
you can have as many hidden layers as you want. But to make our example simple, we are having only one in our neural network. So next to that, we have another three green circles. That's our output. Remember, the number of outputs must be the same as the number of inputs. In here, the algorithm is trying to calculate the final values of outputs with these connections. So resulting to this, for each input value, we are having every single output value. x1 with a cap, x2 with a cap, and x3 with a cap. In terms of what we have discussed in the previous slide, we can state that the lower part of the neural network is encoder. And the upper side is the coder. The coder is responsible to make reconstruction with output values. As knowing that reconstruction is not exactly the same as the input, we always have some kind of reconstruction loss which tell us how our output values are similar to the input values. And remember, hidden layers must have a lower dimensionality than the input data. This is the reason why sometimes autoencoders are called as intercomplete autoencoders. Now, we are ready to jump to even more specifically case. Performing PCA with an intercomplete linear encoding. Some keywords. PCA is a principal component analysis. This is one of the most popular dimensionality reduction algorithms. For example, if we have a noisy data in the input, the output will be the more general representation of the data. Under complete, neural network which has a lower dimensionality in hidden layers than inputs. And linear, this is when neural network has a linear activation function to calculate output values. So the main key point in here, if the autoencoder used only linear activation and the cost function is the mean square error, it is MSE, before ending this sentence, remember, what is the last function? This is a function that maps an events or values of one or more variables into a real number, intuitively representing some cost associated with the event. And optimization problem seeks to minimize a loss function. Mean square error, or MSE, Calculating the average of the squares of the error that is, the average squared difference between the estimated values and actual value. Then, this scenario ends up performing PCA. Congratulations, you know a lot of now. Now, I guess, it is the most exciting part of this video. Let's start this with some graphics. We have two plots. On the left side you can see three-dimensional data with some noise and outliers. On the right side, more general reproduced distribution of this data in 2D space, which looks more readable than the left one. Remember the previous slides? Yes, we are talking about the same idea of autoencoders with PCA. Let's start some coding right now to bring our magical ideas to real world. We have an empty board for coding. Good start. Firstly, import Keras library from TensorFlow framework. Yes, we will use Keras which works on TensorFlow backend. Let's start to define what is the encoder in our algorithm. Let's bring back to the structure of neural network we want to design right to the coding space. Ok, keep defining our encoder. Keras dot models and sequential. Wait, what is sequential network? The official TensorFlow documentation tells us that sequential model is appropriate for a plain stack of layers where each layer has exactly one input tensor and one output tensor. A sequential model is not appropriate when the first, your model has multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Second, any of your layers has a multiple inputs or multiple outputs. Third one, you need to do a layer sharing. And the last one, you want non-linear topology, for example for multi-branch model. This line of code defines our encoder as dense layer with two nodes in hidden layer and three inputs as input shape. Now we need to define what is the coder in our neural network. This part consists of sequential layer also and has three nodes which correspond to our output values and two input values which comes from a hidden layer. As you can see, we are defining our layer sequentially. That is why the type of our layers is sequential. Now it's the time to define our autoencoder. 
Remember, autoencoder has two parts, encoder and decoder. Let's define it in similar way we did before. With this line of code, we are combining encoder part and decoder part into one unit. And this is our autoencoder. Now, we have the architecture of our autoencoder. The next step is to tell our autoencoder how it should handle the data we ingest into this architecture. For this, we need to compile our autoencoder. As discussed before, we tell our encoder that the losses should be evaluated by the mean square error function. Then we need to define which optimizer to use. What is an optimizer? Optimizer are algorithms or methods used to change the attributes of your neural network such as weights and learning rate in order to reduce the losses. Ok, we need to define something in here. And we select one of the most popular combination of stochastic gradient descent and learning rate of 0.1. Learning rate defines how quickly our model, in our case, our autoencoder learns from the data. To get clear intuition how it works and how it's being calculated, check a separate special video dedicated for this question only. That is simple. We can quickly summarize what we did so far. We organized the autoencoder into two subcomponents, the encoder and the coder. Both are sequential models with a single dense layer each. And the encoder is a sequential model containing the encoder followed by the decoder. The autoencoder's number of output is equal to the number of inputs, and in our case it's equal to 3. And the last point in this list. To perform a simple PCA we do not use any activation function, and the cost function is the mean squared error. We can continue and finish design our autoencoder. Come back quickly to the plot above. Let's say the data on the left is our training data, X-Train. Now we can train the model on a simple 3D dataset and use it to encode that same dataset, but improved and to get a more readable variant. Let's have a special variable for this. It is a history. This variable tells autoencoder, hey, let's grab the given input data and put it in your neural network architecture with all the configuration inside and learn from this data in 20 epochs. Wait, what is the epoch? One epoch is when an entire dataset is passed forward and backward through the neural network only once. Since one epoch is too big to fit, we divide it into several smaller batches. Almost finish. Now we have the trained model, the trained neural network, which is our trained autoencoder, which can make reconstruction with the given data. Let's finally do it, and this is our predictions. Here we need to tell the our encoder, you belong to the trained autoencoder, so grab the given data and reproduce it. You can do it. Remember the chess game example. Let's use it again for this coding. The logic is the same. We have the actual game situation on the left. This is our training data. Then we train our autoencoder and as final result we have the game plan with the most meaningful chess positions in our brains. That is reconstructed data. That is the output. Remember, the coder is doing the best to deliver the same details as the input has, but with some fixes and improvements. It can be image, voice, numerical data, almost everything. That is all what I wanted to say in this video and in this last part I suggest you to check it out some ideas how you can to apply autoencoders into practice, into real world projects. So never stop learning and see you in the next videos, bye bye.